Hello and Allahu Akbar, the Baha'i greeting, God is most glorious to all the people of the planet, wherever you are, whoever you are. Time is 11.55, basically 12 o'clock. Today is Friday, 27th, my time, my watch says, of the April, and I am beginning to undertake to fulfill one of my promises, <coughs> which was to talk about a critical study of a book. Let's see what that book is. This book is uh, Gate of the Hearts. The book is, uh, it says, Understanding the Writings of the Bab. It is done by Nader Saidi. And uh, pretty expensive book. The reason I'm doing a critical study of this book is not really to take a uh, It's not to take a revenge, it's not to take, uh, to put objections or anything at the book or even uh, Mr. Nader Saidi. He's a Baha'i and I think he's a devout believer of the Baha'u'llah and the Bab. But he has written these books. The book has flaws, a lot of flaws in it. Um, I sent him an email I uh, when I got it. Uh, see that I said the book is wrong, it has to be changed. But you know, he would not even answer. <clears throat> so, the reason I'm uh, talking about this book is because this would be the first book written in English about the revelation of the Bab. Previously, people have written books about the history of the Bab uprising. You know, Nicola, I don't know, Comtech of New. Uh, Edward G. Brown and uh, now and then of course they have given certain opinion that what it means the revelation of the Bob trying to talk about the content of the revelation of the Bob which most of the time they have gone wrong and uh, there was another guy around uh, some 30 years ago Dennis McCoyne he goes in Iran and he wrote a couple of books in the Babi faith, on the Babi religion, on the Bab, which uh, there's no accuracy to any of it except that I would say that he has done a good job in, like a curator, uh, to say where the writings are, what are the numbers and the naming, cataloging, uh, in different various resources and sources in London, in Cambridge, in Haifa, in Iran. Uh, he has brought those things and uh, even the names of what they are and maybe a little very briefly some talks about what these tablets are. And uh, later on he has started to go to the content, this Messiah of Shiraz, which is a combination of his other regurgitations. And then, of course, he's done a lot of mistakes. He actually uh, becomes personal and he attacks the Bob as a revealer of the Babi religion and he says a lot of things about the Bob, which I, uh, uh, I had to uh, confront him and I did. It's the videos, few videos before this. But among the Baha'is, I haven't seen anybody really writing in English anything that could be uh, of any value in a sense to uh, undertake a project. Except this book, Gate, Gate of the Heart, which implying Bob as the Gate of the Heart even the very uh, title, if it means Gate of the Heart, that Bob is the Gate, is the door to the heart is not it. It's just the, you know, uh, fancy names that it is. So Bob was strictly speaking, he's the gate to Baha'u'llah. If you want to know Baha'u'llah, you have to go through him. And that is for the Shiites, for the Muslims. 
A Christian, they don't need that. They would have to go, you know, uh, through Jesus Christ and get in. So, uh, um, I know of another Saidi. When did I heard his name? The way I speak about these people, as though you think I know them personally, none of them. I don't know any Baha'i scholars in the last 18 years. Previous to that, uh, you know, uh, I was engaged in contracting and work, which I'm in mean, right now. So I don't know any one of these people in person. But since I read books, there's a magazine called Pajuhesh Nama, I think it's number four, where I... Uh, got to know about Nader Saidi that he was uh, trying to solve one of the puzzles of Sheikh Ahmad, one of the forerunners of the Bab, uh, uh, that uh, what he says about the letter W or the letter Wav, which I've explained this before too. And he came short of explaining what the bottom line is, it's just because it's not in his jurisdiction. And Baha'u'llah and purpose, he doesn't talk about that either. So, but overall it was, it was good. It showed to me somebody's interest in the topic and he's gone, you know, to a certain extent deep into understanding it. So, when the first time I saw these books on the internet, I said, wow, this is good, this is good, let's just see it. Somebody out there in English trying to explain these things. And as soon as I read it, I found out, oh Jesus, there's a problem with this book. So I sent him an email, as I told you, that he would not even respond. So I started to read the book. It's, it's ridiculous prices they ask for it if you go on Amazon or someplace like that. But there was some place I think I bought it, you know, a uh, rel relatively good price. I got the book and um, it's a very hard read book. It's about the hardest book I've read. Uh, you know, some of the writing of uh, Shogi Effendi is hard, but this one is just goes to the climax. It's a very tough book to read and I had to read it. And I'll tell you, what are my opinion about this book. Um, the very first thing that you encounter in the book, it has created a wall and a hurdle in front of the reader by using some very unfamiliar English words. I don't know how many of you know the word deriding. D-E-R-I-D-I-N-G, it means a scorning or joking, making fun of somebody, deriding, derision. I've heard of this word Shogu Effendi using in translation, you know, of the writing of Baha'u'llah, but uh, it's not a word that a lot of people, they know, deriding, hermeneutic. He uses a lot of tough, tough English words that I have ask the other English-speaking people, they say, very tough. So, as if the writer wants to create this wall in the front of the reader, that, hey, you are nobody. If you want to come to know who I am, you got to have to pass this dictionary and this lexicon and the vocabulary, level of the vocabulary, before you understand what I'm saying. As if he wants to put you in your place, you know nothing. And uh, <laughs> I found that the words are difficult. So, me, I, I'm pretty good in English. I don't speak well, but believe me, I've read these books in English. So I'm familiar with a lot of words. So what I had to do, I had to get a dictionary to understand a lot of these words. So, I remember a boy in Toronto, his name is Fawad. He was talking to Ali that, have you heard about the book Gate to the Hearts? Whatever the hell name is, Gate of the Hearts. Gate of the Heart. And he says, uh, how so? 
and said to Ali, oh, it's such a hard, hard book to understand. Therefore, it's a big book because you can't understand it. <laughs> if, uh, if you don't understand it in English, obviously, and you don't know the word, immediately you're giving the okay, like a license registration. Okay, you are bigger than me. Why? Because of your vocabulary. Anyways, when you pass the hurdle by using dictionary to understand some of these words, you know the content is very lame, handicapped. The book is very disorganized from the very beginning to the end. Very lame. Chopped up pieces here and there. Let me get to it. So, I'm going to outline the problem with the books and then I have to, uh, unfortunately, fortunately, whatever, go chapter by chapter, page by page, the things that he has said to encounter it according to the writing of the Baha'u'llah and even the Bob and the facts to tell you why is it wrong. Number one, The book, the problem one, number one, is the very difficult vocabulary that he uses. And even construction of the sentences are very hard. It's not written for people. It's an academic book for the people that are going to the university. I don't know, they have a hell of a time to read it. There has to be a teacher on the side to tell what he means. And when you know, of course, what he knows, then you understand, well, what is it that you're trying to say? Uh, he has the second point is that he has uh, certain translations that it seems even is borrowed from others for example uh, one of the writing of the book which is an interpretation of one of the chapters of Quran is called Valas. I swear to time that would it be. As he has used it in a context uh, of a Persian to use that, and even sometimes Arabs probably, he has translated this word Valas, which really is time. And I tell you, time, and not in a sense of a known period to it. When you say century, then you know it's a hundred years, you know, so a week, a day. Time is an indefinite period, you know. But after pro properly be translated, it would be the age, you know. So, he has translated this as the word afternoon. Yeah, the word as also is used as afternoon. But when you read the actual chapter of Quran, he says, I swear, according to his translation, I swear to afternoon wherein man will be in loss. Quran says mankind will lose in the afternoon. Well, it's clearly the word afternoon is a wrong translation for the word as it has to say in age in time man is a loser yeah because we all lose to time we're going to get to it or he has uh, other word for example bob uses a lot of word the word allah allah that means god all means really a tribe not just a family in a sense of four five two six all means the whole tribe for example, the Sheikh of Dubai is called uh, Sheikh Muhammad Ali Maktoum. You know, he is from descendant of Maktoum. Like the house, we say in English, you say the house of Windsor. You know, um, Guelph is from the house of the Windsor. So, Allah, which means, you know, from the house of God, family of God. He has translated uh, all the laws the family of God. Well, God doesn't have a family. 
this Allah, which means a reference to the descendant of Muhammad, which properly meaning Muhammad and his 12 successors, including his daughter, 14 people. These are called Allah, these 14 people, in the writing of the Bab. Translated by Shoghi Effendi in Kitab e as the Immaculate Essence. Family of God is, again, is not a certified translation. I've found a few of those. The second thing about this book that you see, he has categorized <laughs> uh, very amazingly the writing of the Bab at the period of the time that they've been revealed as they were first a phase, he calls it an interpretive phases, phase in which the writing of the Bob was all about interpretation. Then the second phase comes after a couple of years, becomes philosophical writing. Then it comes legislative, which means Bob started to talk about the laws and the rules. Totally wrong. To categorize the writing of the Bob as such, like a taxonomist, it is more like the taxonomy of the Aristotle about the plant, which you would call them, not angiosperm or gymnosperm, you would have called them flowering plant and non-flowering plant. It's the most ridiculous things to do, to say that Bob at certain times started his writing was all about interpretations, and then there was no philosophy involved at, that, at which point. Then the writing becomes philosophical. Then the rules and the laws and the commandment came after. According to the uh, facts of the books of the Bob that I have it all, none of this category is right. I'll tell you where this comes from. If you want to categorize the writing of the Bob, it's like you're trying to find, define the shape of the water at waterfall. It's constantly changing. You can see the shape of the water in the prairie, south of a river. It gives you some idea. Those are the writing of Baal. Writing of Baal, it's pretty clear. The writing of the Bob is very tumultuous, very many ups and downs in it. You have to be, oh my God, you cannot just be. I'm telling you that no one can get there except elders of God, except as he says, the very manifestation of God, such Baha'u'llah, letters of living, and you know, Certain gifted individuals, people cannot go to analyze the writing of the Bob as such. Now, this is what I'm telling you. Remember what I said, and then we'll show you page by page where he brings these things and why these things are wrong. So, so far we heard those. I have even seen that he has even given the dates wrong. For example, it says the tablet of the tafsir, the interpretations of the chapter of Kauthar, and he's given a wrong date about that. So if you want to, uh, the title of the book says Understanding the Writing of the Bob, my friend, you must have actually read them at least. But the book is written in such a way that who knows what I'm talking about anyways. And we get to it, because these books are not published and not accessible. Even those of the manuscript are not giving it to you. Nowadays, you know, uh, you can find them here and there. But if you call Universal Laws of Justice, says that, hey, please, can I have a copy of the Kitab al ruh the Book of the Spirit, which is in the form of the manuscript of the writing of the Bob, and no way, Jose, you're not going to get that. No matter what you pay, no matter what you want to do, they will never give it to you. 
There's nothing in the content of the book that you think, God forbid, is against Baha'i faith or a problem with it. No, they just don't give it to you. It's not accessible. So, uh, uh, he knows, therefore, people who are reading the book, who are there to, who are they to know whether the books are, we're going to buy it. Some of them are internet, a manuscript, all of them are different. They're all them impossible to read them, even in original. These are photocopies, they're not originals. Uh, many of them have got problem on it, uh, missing. Some of these writings written, I've seen the original, some of them, with a red ink, and then they don't come very clean in photocopy. They show different color. So you, you won't be able to read it unless you consult the original manuscript. Therefore, knowing this fact, he seems to just go on and say whatever he likes to say. What's to say to judge him? But I guess he was wrong here because I'm around. So, uh, even the dates, as I mentioned here, has gone wrong. Now, one of the most heinous things that he does in this book, he starts to compare the writing of the Bob to those of the Emmanuel Kant and other people. That is serious mistakes. I've brought this before, I'm going to tell you again. Baha'u'llah clearly says in Kitab Aghdash, do not compare the writing of God with any of the, your own postulations or your understanding. It's a different category. Same as Bob, Bob says the same thing. And this guy is trying to create shape and put this writing into some kind of a form of a human understanding and compare it even with Emmanuel Kant. I'm going to tell you again more about that as well, that uh, where we, uh, <coughs> what kind of mistake is this? But briefly I'll tell you, this universe, that's our planet Earth, what we call nature here. This is, we believe, created by God through his word, which is his willpower, the will of God has created. God, through his will, has created this universe. Not himself, but his will. So creation is the manifestation of the power of the will of God. So, it is not a Euclidean mathematics in it. You know, Euclid's some guy, the Greek guy, who started to teach us all about geometry and triangles and rectangles and all that jazz. This is Euclidean way. This house is built based on the Euclidean you know, concept. Nature is not like that. There's no perfect triangle or a square or a rectangle or a circle or oval or whatever. It's in it. It's not. Every shape is different. So you can't trace our mathematics in the nature. Doesn't work. The same power, which is the will of God, and this nature is the manifestation of that power, has also revealed these writings. These writings are the manifestations of the power of that will. So there's a good symmetrical parallel between this spiritual writing of God and his physic, between the physic and metaphysic of God, there's a parallel, very comparable to each other. So it is very difficult to come and put the writing of the Bob and the way he categorized things or whatever with that of anybody, any human being. He does not have the way we start the book. He doesn't speak like us. He doesn't start from a content and then pages. He doesn't do any of those ways when he writes and when he talks. It's a natural way of coming, his words. 
is the comparison between the apple and apple pie. An apple pie comes from the apple, but apple pie is a dead apple. Kill the apple to make the apple pie. I don't know how much of the original apple is an apple pie. There's some apple there, you know, with a lot of sugars and this and that on it. Is it from the apple? Yeah. Is it the apple? No. So this is what he does, and he goes into some grievous mistakes when he does that. I'll tell you, it becomes totally ridiculous. Then he starts to interpret the writing too, that what this means and that means, and this interpretation is again is outside of his jurisdiction as a Baha'i. You should know. Both Bob and Baha'u'llah says, stay away from interpreting my writing. It is right in the book of Bayan that you cannot interpret. Only Baha'u'llah can and the letters of the living and so on and so forth. And then even when he mentions and he tries to, in a few places he brings this uh, name of Dennis McCoyne in his book. And he objects at him, certain objections, you know about whether a book was revealed, I don't know, in one year or 42 days or whatever. So he argues with Dennis McCoy about this very, very superficial issues. It seems to me that he has not read even what Dennis McCoy has uttered about the book. Or then he agrees with him. Because this belligerent man, Dennis McCoy, goes out of the way. We call himself an academic. He sent some email to me. Oh, my boy, they teach me how to do it this way, that way. He's trying to teach me procedures, eh? And how it works in university. <laughs> and I'm kind of bind to that and I have to do that. What does this man which is supposed to study the writing of the Bob and give opinion of this writing. So he becomes personally attacks Bob. He basically calls Bob crazy, obsessed, having, having mental disorder. He says a lot of obnoxious things about the Bob. This is why I attacked him. Not enough, actually, on, his, uh, on my videos. So Nader Saidi, which is a good Baha'i, it seems so feeble, so afraid, so apologetic. Like, I'm sorry I'm defending Bob. That's how this book is written. As if he has completely doubt about what he says. He's like a storyteller who's telling their story. Halfway in the middle of the story, he forgets what the story was. And then he remembers, hey, listen, none of these listeners, they know their story anyways. So I can go and make up what I want. That's what has happened to him in the book. He gets inside the content of the writing of the Bob. At one point, you'll find out that he says something here and goes back against what he said later. So there's nothing definite about what he says. He keep changing because he's trying to play, you know, with a Noah's Ark. You can't. Uh, I'll bring those things up in the book. So, anyways, uh, <laughs> so instead of going to criticize Mr. Macron, as what are you talking this, you know, personal attacks, psychological, you know observations, analysis of the Bob, mister, and he doesn't point to any of those as if he agrees with Dennis McCoy or, or he hasn't read it. He just talks about certain little things, like the guy has killed somebody and he's on trial for murder and you're objecting at him that, hey, you forgot to cut your nail. That's not why he's on trial. He hasn't put Dennis McCon on trial in this book. 
who objected some very superficial things about him. This is another, you know, mistake, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. So, why is this happening to the Baha'i scholars? Hmm? This is the reason. You want to get into the writing of the Baha'u, or the writing of Baha'u'llah for that matter. He has written a book also about the Baha'u'llah. Oh, I'm afraid of reading that book. Uh, but the man has not ever seriously engaged himself in depth with the Baha'i writing. He's not a Baha'i scholar. This is a hobby for him. This is a sideshow. He has gone to the non-Baha'is, to the system that we are going to replace, to the enemies. He has gone and learned everything from them, installed every goddamn hypothesis in his head, from Emmanuel Kant to Montesquieu to whoever all those, you know, Garbaggios are, and now with that head full of virus, with a little left in the, you know, memory, he wants to come and find a place for the Baha'i faith in those things. So his criteria is Kant. His criteria is uh, all his philosophers. And that's what Baha'u'llah says in the Book of Search, in the very chapter. If a man is going to use the standard of any man, he says, whether it is high, whether it is low, if you take him as in a standard to weigh Baha'u'llah, then you go wrong. You can't say, I believe in Baha'u'llah because people are following him, because so and so is good then Baha'u'llah becomes a secondary in this belief system. First you believe in me, first you saw I'm a nice guy, I'm a kind guy, I'm giving, I'm knowledgeable, whatever. Based on that, you trusted that when I say Baha'u'llah is the prophet of God, or is the manifestant, then you're accepting Baha'u'llah. Through me, I have become a means. Well, that's an awful big, huge mistake. This kind of Baha'u'llah then will become bad if tomorrow I become bad because you used me to believe in him. If tomorrow I change, tomorrow I have a fight with you, then you leave Baha'u'llah too. That's the way it is. You can't read these books. Science is strictly speaking, yes. But when you go to the area where it's exclusively for a God, and the revelation of God. We talk about human being, when he's talking about his family, when he's talking about his spiritual relationship. Those things which are not the work of scientists, and then you want to come down and bring, uh, compare all the writing of the Bible. This is what these kind of brains are all full of virus. This is where they go wrong. All of them are like that. Uh, they sent somebody from Universal Laws of Justice, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago that this is Dr. Ghadirian, I don't know, the head of the McGill University in the department of psychiatric department, this and that and that. Okay, oh, a truckload of all these names. Therefore what? Therefore he is licensed, given that he knows about Baha'i faith? Zero, zilch, huge mistakes. I have read some of these books only to know where they are wrong. And the people, what are people are following? I'm reading about heroin, opium, drinking, alcohol, not to use it, but to know what the hell it is that people are addicted to. If I can learn from Emmanuel Kant, and Diderot and Montesquieu. <laughs> then I want to come bring all of that to Baha'u'llah. 
How are you going to delete it? You can't delete it. It's going to stay. It becomes a part of you. You went towards those things and you got paid for it. So, essentially, as we read the book, we know Mr. Nader Saidi has not really read the writing of the Baal. Hey, he jumps on from this point to that point, you know. It's all extrapolations uh, of something that he doesn't know what it is. It's all fancy thinking. So, this is what this book is. But we're going to have to get to it, I guess, as we go through this. To find out now in the introductions of the book let's see page four I'll tell you what I mean page four of the book book page four it says does any possibility exist for genuine reconciliation mutual respect and peace among the religions of the world. The writing of the Bob provides a challenging novel perspective from which to examine such questions. Absolutely absurd. Bob does not deal with this kind of topic at all. He's completely left it to Baha'u'llah. Bob does not talk about any social issues. Nothing. Even he says himself that even my rules and my laws were all the same as Quran. I didn't bring anything new. Because I didn't want people to think this is a new book. He says that. In this book, he says himself. His translation of the same word that Bob says have brought these things uh, same as Islam. So people do not feel that this is a new book that I'm trying to replace Islam or anything like that. He asked the king of Iran, he says, it's in translation too, actually, in the, uh, part of it in the writing of uh, uh, Bob that is in English. He says to the king, kill everybody. That is not my follower. From the holy land of Shiraz. Just get rid of them. He orders. He says, all those Christians in Europe, they've gone advanced, la, 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 but unfortunately, none of them understood Islam, they're all going to hell. That's what he says. This is not the religion of Baha'u'llah. This is in the preliminary stage. He's dealing with Muslim. Bob is very specific in his mission. This mission is not dealing with the Christians just with the Muslims, and particularly when with the Shiites. But you can see, his writing is essentially that most of you, he says, you went wrong about God because you're thinking, well, like nobody, they think everything all together, you know, is called God, is the oneness of all things. Together, God, along with everybody else, exists. They uh, understood the existence of God and me and the apple and all, we're all sharing in the existence. And so they call the whole thing as God. And Bob has been trying fighting this in so many of his tablets, that this is wrong and he bring all the philosophers of Islam, Sunnis and Shiite, mostly Shiites, that they went in this road and they're wrong. The essentials that Muslims, they went wrong about it in their philosophy only, not social issues. Not at all. Bob has no interest, not a word, about the oneness of the religions, oneness of the planet Earth, do this, and just nothing in his writings. Nothing. Because this is not what his mission was. He just wanted to create that. He's, he's like, a, like a destroying force that he goes and chops the trees in the middle of the jungle, creating a place for a landing of the ship of the Ark of Baha'u'llah. That's what he does. All of his work is preparations. He has nothing for the people of the planet, for the world. 
in any sense about world government, your government, nothing. It's nothing. So who is this is trying to say that Bob is trying to address this kind of a thing? It's nothing like this in the right angle. It's totally in it. Okay, this then oh this is in the page four two. Now this is funny. Now as I told you that, because he's familiar with the philosophy in the Europe, the continental philosophy of the Europe, because he hasn't read probably the philosophy of Chinese, because that would not be called philosophy really. You can use the word philosophy if you want, but it's something else. That's not the way philosophy works in any part of the world as it works in the Europe. That's what they call the continental philosophy, the continent of Europe, philosophy there, European philosophy. He's been familiar with those, and as a result, he says Bob was trying to do something that always showed the offend in all the Baha'is trying to say that is not what Bob was all about. Muslims, they know Bob is a type of Muslim who's trying to create a reform in Islam. So they use the word Fereke, which means a sect of Islam, as a reformer. And Baha'is all over the world, as far as I know, they're trying to say that no, Bob is an independent religion of God. It's not a sect of Islam. Bob is not a reformer of Islam. He has not come to fix Islam in any shape or form. He has to come to abrogate it, cancel it, revoke it. So what he says, he says, no, there's a he says, I don't know, let's read this. Against the background of the intellectual and political impasse within Islam, the historic significance and revolutionary import of the writing of both the Bob and Baha'u'llah stands out. Do you see what he says there? Against the background of the intellectual and the political impasse within Islam, the historic significance of the revolutionary import of the writing of the both Bob and Baha'u'llah stands out. For there was for there was indeed a radical reform movement in Islam. Is Baha'i Fid is a radical reform in Islam? Bob is a radical reform in Islam? People? So radical in its transformation of Islamic concepts and categories that ultimately it has ceased to be perceived as a part of Islam at all. So first, <laughs> it was a movement within Islam. Bob is a part of Islam, it's a movement within Islam. And then it ceased to be. In as much the same way that Christianity, although appearing at the first to be a reform movement within Judaism, came to be recognized as a separate and independent religion. But the movement initiated by the Bab was far more than an Islamic reformation. Then he changes his words at the bottom. So there are many things like that. That he looks at the Bobby, Bobby movement, that Bob has come to basically tell to the Muslim, okay, be a Muslim, but so and so has to be changed. In that case, it would not be an independent religion, isn't it? The radical reform. Okay, I got a lot to say about this guy. So again, it shows to me that he's a Euclidean um, guy who's trying to compare the nature with the fabrications of the man. In page 11 of the introduction. Page 11. The will of God is not a static, but, but ever creative, renewing 
the form in which it manifests itself in accordance with humanity a stage of the development the will of God is not a static the funny thing is that the same gentleman Mr. Saidi in the book he says that the entire universe and even this writing of the book is created by the will of God and that is what is not a static. The creation of the will of God is not a static. Not the will of God. We don't know what will of God is. To call it a static or non a static. It's more like the color of the blue and the yellow mixing together and created green. Green means where we are. Creation. We cannot even fathom what the green is made out of if you don't know. Water cannot fathom to know that there's oxygen and hydrogen made in. So what is not a static is not the will of God. The word is static, non-static, about God, will of God is all out the door. It doesn't work. So what's not a static is the creation of the will of God, not the will of God. If the will of God is changing all the time, this feel that way, well then this God is just one of us, like everybody else, which we Baha'is, we don't accept that. So, again, it says that, the page 11. The will of God is not a static, but ever creative. Not the will of God. The creation caused by the will of God is always undergoing changes. Evolves. Not the will of God itself. Let's see. In the same book it says that... Uh, this is one of the good things about him, that he has understood that God is not the creator, the will of God is the creator, that he brought in this book. So what else? In page 23, trying to analyze Bob now, as why his decisions are the way they are. There's a time Bob, in one of his writings, he says that for five years he uh, would not reveal anything and uh, he answers Dennis McCoyne that Dennis McCoyne is wrong about interpreting at what these five years are. He thought he's uh, uh, not going to be talking as the Qa'im. So, But what happens? Bob did break his word because he said, I'm not going to talk in five years, but I'm not going to reveal anything, but he did. He explains this, but the passionate insistence of the Bob's followers, that's acceptable, as well as the Bob's own character, led the Bob to alter his decree. What is this word here, mister? You're sitting in a court of God, and I'm going to ask you a question, mister, before you die. As well as Bob's own character, led the Bob to alter his decree. You're questioning the character of the Bob as a wishy-washy character? What do you mean by character of the Bob? Bob doesn't have any character except character of God. He is God in form of man. The reason that he altered his degree is not known to you and me. Whatever it is, it was wise, acceptable, 
and reasonable and useful for mankind. But his personality and his character, as you see, you think you know, has led him to change, then you must know his character, eh? To you. To you, Mr. Nader Saidi. Amo Nader, what are you talking about? So, <laughs> Well, I put things under microscope. I'm going to have to because you have made these books and it has created this reputation. And people are going to be soon thinking you're like one of the uh, followers of Dennis McCoyne uh, in approach, not in belief. Uh, then you end up, your book becomes a new Bible in English about the writing of the Bob. So I'm going to have to challenge this that what you just said right now is wrong and you go on in this your philosophical journey of understanding the Bob in page 342 you brought something else too. Let's bring that up. I want to talk to that separately again but it is of the same nature of the word that you have said in here. Now let's look at this. 342 what did you say here now about Bob again? <laughs> okay, in page 342. Now, and here he's changing totally. Uh, it seems another, as he was writing this book, he started to learn more and more about the writing of the Bob. It's like those uh, Hollywood movies that there was no scenario, there was no story. Uh, they were very, very commercial and cheap movies. Usually the director and the producer and uh, everybody was the same and they would start to film and as they, will, uh, as they were filming, their story would take shape. <laughs> there was nothing uh, ahead of what has to be done. So it seems this book as it goes in here, he is saying that Bob knew none of his laws, none of his ordinances would have to be there, really. Something provisional. Something that it would have to be changed by Baha'u'llah. He knew it. Therefore, as a result, he felt free to say anything he wanted to say. I'm going to legislate this. I'm going to legislate you have to do that. Because I know it's not going to work. So, that's a big interpretation. He says, if the Bob knew his dispensation would last but a few years, naturally he would, he would also have known that the laws he set down could never actually become the legal code of a society because they would soon be superseded by the laws of the promised one, which is Baha'u'llah and would be modified or abrogated as he chose, that is Baha'u'llah's choice. Hence, the Bob was free. <laughs> Hence, the Bob was free to use the genre of legislation for a rhetorical purpose, rhetorical purpose for very different form the normal purpose of the setting down laws that are identical to the purpose that characterizes all the Bob's other writings. So he said that this point <laughs> it was all rhetoric. Bob was free to bring any rhetoric. I'm just going to say that you have to say 1,000 times Allahu Akbar. Go say 700,000 times this. I'm going to say anything I want. I'll rhetoric. Because I know everything I say is just going to go down by Baha'u'llah. That's what he says. Bob was free. Fundamentally, you haven't understood. When you say Bob, remember, you're telling God. He's the manifestation of God. God was free. Because he, God knew he's going to change it in his second manifestation, which is Baha'u'llah. 
therefore it's all rhetoric to you. Time to analyze. And he has a few other places. He says those things. He thought he understood them, how the <laughs> mindset of the Bob works. So. And in the very introduction, actually, he has this uh, book. Uh, um, there's a chapter here. Uh, Uh, Everyone's just big, big word. It says the Bob's critiques of Islamic traditionalism. Bob actually has no critique on the traditionalism of Islam. Nothing as such in any of his writings. Nothing. If he means by traditions, Bob has brought all the traditions of Muhammad, even the one that he hasn't heard it even. He says to one of the people that I haven't heard this one, but still I can tell you, uh, if, it were, if it were to be taken as true, it would mean this. So, as for tradition of changing of Islam, Bob hasn't changed really nothing. The only opposition he has had was about a wrong concept that some of the Muslim had taken for as who God is, what creation is, and a very fundamental philosophy that they went wrong about it. He's trying to create Bob as some kind of a, a reformer, I don't know, as the one we had seen in 19th centuries, all kind of them. None of it is there. Bob himself says, I try not to change anything. Especially to make it easy for people to see that there is no new book of it. So it's not hard for them. I make it as easy as, is as possible for them. And I accept it to say I am not a prophet of God in the beginning, he says. Just I'm a representative of the prophet. I'm representative of Imam. Only to make it easier for them. So what traditionalism you're talking, sir? You know, you're going to the Lala land. Okay? So 4B, let's see what else is there. Now, in the page 26, he's trying to bring up as why it's difficult to do uh, a scholarly work in the writing of the book. One of them is his accessibility, but he doesn't explain why he's not accessible. It's not really accessible because universal laws of justice in Haifa has confiscated, seized the writing of God, which is the writing of the Bob, and is not giving it to people. Only certain scholars. I was walk, talking to one of the guys, I don't, I don't know his name, uh, I shouldn't say because they might, you know, take him and revenge from him too. And I told him that, uh, what is your problem? He was writing some books, he found me and he talked to me that, do you know where these writings are that Bob is bringing in this book, in the history book? I said, yes, this is there, this is there, a few of them. And then he was very much interested to ask more. I told him I cannot give you any more. That's enough. So... Uh, and he said to me that, why, why are you afraid of, of you? He was telling me, why are you, who are you afraid of? I said, well, you know, you're a Baha'i. Why can't you ask Universal Laws of Justice to give you all those uh, books? He said, they never give it to me. They have only certain trusted people that they give it to them. My God. Talk about dark ages of the Europe. This is why it's not accessible. Why aren't you brave enough, Mr. Nader Saidi, and say why is it not accessible? I know how many Muslims, how many Baha'is, they want to get the writing of the Bob, they can't. 
The only compilation that is made by Universal Laws of Justice, the writing selected from the writing of the Bob in Persian translated in English, I have proven right there on the internet. The copy is wrong. It's repeating a verse twice. The transcriber, I don't know what, what kind of a dope was he on that he has written the verse twice and that's the authentic copy given from Universal Service of People about the writing of the Bob. You know, this is not accessible. Then he says, well, it's not been translated and it's not been printed. Too bad. Because if you go and right now do the writing of the Bob, read it, whatever, find it, and try to write and try to publish those books, again, the Baha'is, they will not accept it for printing. And they have good reason also why. They're wise enough not to. But they don't allow it to be printed. That's the general. And then, of course, it talks about uh, the third one is that because it has a different type of language. Yes. The writing of the Bob is uh, not an ordinary way of speaking, Persian or Arabic. But it doesn't again explain. The reason was that the first one, you know, we know of, we call it first book, which is the Tafsir al-Ahsan al-Asas, the interpretation of the uh, Surah of Yusuf, and Saifi uh, Mahzuna, Bob is writing like everybody else. Of all that, beautiful. Then they accused him that you are plagiarizing, copying the Islamic book in your writing. God got angry. He said, okay, good. He invented, God invented in the writing of the Bob a way of speaking that is not normal talks and is very consistent. In the Bayan, in the Book of Asma, in the Panchan, in the Saifi Adliye, in Resali Rejad, in so many of them. Consistently speaks like this in Dalai Lassabe and others. In a style of his own. You know why? Because nobody can copy it. You try to write like him. I've already, on the revelation of the Bob, explained how he does. But he, Mr. Saidi, here is not explaining the uniqueness of his writing. Then number four, he says uh, that the topic is very deep. Actually, the topic of the Bob is very simple. There's no depth in the writing of the Bob, to be honest with you. There's not too many uh, topics that he speaks about. Like, you want a deep topic, you have to read the Psalm and Search portion of Baha, Abdul Baha. The book is simple, but the topic is deep. Not in the writing of the Bob. Bob does not get inside these things at all. And the simple things he uses a very hard way, difficult way to tell what that means. In a very in a, in a puzzle, it always uses this puzzle. You know why? Because those that in Iran, if you didn't speak this way, the mullahs, the leaders, that people were listening to them, they would not believe you or anybody. Bob would make them dumbfounded by the way he would bring these puzzles, and sometimes solves them. They wouldn't know what to do with him. They just did not have knowledge. Something that another said is trying to use in his book, by his vocabulary, that to put you right in your place that you can't even come close to read this book. I don't know why he's writing, writing the books then, because nobody can read it. So this is, again, actual topic of the Bob is very simple. Bob doesn't have much to say. On the very beginning, he's trying to tell to people the entire philosophical Bob is about that, about God, about the resurrection, about some fundamental the Muslims were wrong about it. 
He's trying to explain those things in a simple way. The topics were very simple. The expressions very difficult. And then also number five, he says Bob uses codifications, numbers, sure. He always does that. Bob does that. And then, of course, number six, it says, because it is intertextual. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course, it's not, this is not one of the, because it's hard. It's that Bob tells you that, if you want to read my writing, you have to know Islam. You read the writing of the Bob as he speaks, all of a sudden, Half the sentence is quotation from part of the half part of the verse, not a full verse, but part of the verse, a phrase. He keeps using what is in Islam in his talks, in his writings. So, if you don't know Islam, then you wouldn't know it. You would be puzzled again. Is this the word of Bob, or is taken? Is a quotation, or he borrowed? or is trying to bring the writing of Muhammad. Very, very, very difficult. Okay? You have to seriously know all the Islam when you're reading the writing of the Bible to be able to distinguish. So again, it's not that it is hard to understand it anyways, but you wouldn't know where the sources are. It's because your knowledge is not enough. So there are other reasons too that he hasn't said that. Bob purposely, intentionally, creates obstacles. He mutilated his revelation. He puts a self-destruct mechanism on it that it would explode because it did not want this revelation become a means to fight Baha'u'llah. The Bible doesn't talk about the equality of man and women. In Islam, clearly says man is not equal to woman. He's half. This is one of those self-destruct mechanisms God uses in Quran. Because the, when the time comes, nobody can follow Islam. God wants to say that so nobody can follow it. They have to follow Baha'i faith. Bob uses a lot of those things. He doesn't know, another Saidi, because he is uh, browsing, you know, into the writings of the Bob. God knows if he could even read it, because you have to be a professional even in reading those manuscripts. I'll tell you one of these, some of this stuff that I have it here. One of the books that he has is called Sahifiyya A'mal Asane, which is the epistle of the commandments, of the uh, things that uh, a follower has to do within a year. You know, the day of celebration, the day of uh, birthday of this Imam, or, you know, ascensions, or whatever, festivals, whatever it's there. He says in chapter 6 of this book, قُلْ سُومُوا يَا يُحَ الْمَلَأْ يَوْمِ السَّابِ مِنْ هَذِ الشَّهْرِ The month of Safar فَإِنَّ فِيهَا قَدْ وُلِدَ أَلِيِّ بْنِ مُوسَى وَإِنَّهُ لَعِيدٍ حَقٍ عَظِيمٍ Chapter 7, he goes, وَإِنَّ فِي يَوْمِ النِّسْفِ هَذِ الشَّهْرِ The month of Rabi al-Awwal قَدْ وُلَدَ إِسْمُ اللَّهِ الْأَكْبَرَ عَلِيِّ بْنَ مُوسَى In chapter of the 6 of the book, he says, on the 7 days of the month of Safar, the 8th Imam was born. The 7th chapter of the book, he says, at the 15th day of not the month of Safar, the 8th month, Imam Reza had been born. Which one of these dates we have to take now? Seventh month of the Safar or fifteenth month of the Rabi'ul Awwal, Arabic month. 
He was given two different dates for the birthday of the eighth Imam of Islam. Why would he say that? Baha'is, you know, some, there are so many complications, but I know why. For example, it's famous, this is among all the Baha'is and Bahais, Muslims, they attack it a lot, that Bob talks about David and his book Psalms to be before Moses. Well, everyone knows that David came after Moses, but Bob says, no, it was before Moses. Some great scholars that try to solve this problem, probably the biggest number one scholars in the Baha'i faith, the most respected of all, is Abul Fazal al Paivani. He says probably that David must have been Zoroaster. Zoroaster, the Persian prophet. They brought the issue to Shoghi Effendi. Shoghi Effendi says no. Abul Fazal is wrong in that, in that issue. There's no reference. This David is not the raster. And when Abdul Baal tried to say that, there was another David. I today tell you that. These are the puzzles, obstructions, Bob has purposely created. You go into chapter 6, 7, chapter 8, at the same book that I just mentioned. He says, and as Kurullah fi yom al ashar min haza shar, the month of Rabi Osani, fa nafi hagad walad al Hussein ibn al Ali ibn Muhammad. This is mentioned God in the tenth day of this month, the Arabic month of Rabi Osani. Verily in it is born Hussein, the son of Ali, the son of Muhammad. What is this? Bob says, Imam Ali is the son of Prophet Muhammad. Ali is the son of Abi Talib. Ali is the cousin of Muhammad. Bob here says that, Qad walad al Hussein alayhi salam, which we know Imam Hussein, Ibn Ali, well, the son of Ali, and Ali, Ibn Muhammad, the son of Muhammad. What are you going to do with this? A hundred occasions, Bob says Ali ibn Abi Talib. Many, many occasions. All of a sudden here, Ali ibn Muhammad, Ali the son of Muhammad. Now you can interpret any way you want. You can say Ali was really the son of Muhammad, a spiritual son, because he looks like him, he continues, whatever. Muhammad himself said, me and Ali are the father of these nations. The nation of Islam, we are the father. But again, obstacle. In this book, we're going to get to it. Mr. Nader Saidi is trying to say that the big book of the Bob, the first book called the chapter of uh, Yusuf, which is the first book of the Bob, interpretations of the book, has 40 verses in each chapter. Some say it's 42. And then he goes joyously solving the problem. He said, well, both 40 and 42 was right. 40 because the verses that Bob has revealed is 40. However, there are two extra verses in each chapter, one of which is taken from Quran, and the other one is the heading of all the chapter, which is Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is one verse, okay? The second is actually the verse taken from Quran. That's two. 
Besides that, there are 40 verses also revealed by Bob in each chapter. Therefore, it's 40 when it comes to Revelation of Bob, 42 when you add those two verses of Quran into it. So, in here, it's trying to say both verses are correct. Well, today, let's give him a surprise. I have made, I have not only read the book, but I've typed it and I've compared it with other copies and I have gone over it many 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 times 10 years working on it and I found out there is no consistency in the number of the verses in this book at all you will get this book pretty soon on the website. So let's say. First chapter is 40, chapter second is 40, chapter uh, chapter 5 actually. Chapter 1 is 40, chapter 2 is 40, chapter 3 is 40, chapter 4 is 39, chapter 5 is 39, chapter 6 is 40, 7 is 40, 8 is 40, 9 is 40, 10 is 39, 11 is 39, 12 is 40, 13 is 36, 14 is 40, 15 is 40, 16 is 40, 17 is 41, 18 is 39, 19 is 38, 20 is 40 again, 21 is 40, 22 is 40, but 23 is 36, 24 is 38, and goes on. There is no 40 verses in the chapters of this book. Nothing. Bob says it's 40, but there isn't. And it's very simple too to know. Todd Lawson, he teaches in the University of Toronto, religious study. He's got a PhD on this issue. I had seen a copy of his uh, book of this manuscript was given to me by Dr. Cole from Michigan University. There I see Dr. Lawson is trying to find out the number of the verses and he's perplexed and puzzled because all the verses it ends to letter A. For example, Hakima, Abrara, Tamtira, all the verses ends with letter A. It's very simple, it's not difficult. You go on and do it, you never see 40 in all of them. Now you want to analyze the writing of the ball? Another strange thing, oh, it's nice for you to tell you that. You want to get perplexed in the writing of the ball? In the, I think, a manuscript called uh, F21 at the Cambridge University, there is this chapter that in there, this tablet, is in the interpretations of one of the verses of Quran and is an answer to uh, Mirza Muhammad Ali's questions. And in this question, this is the question. وَإِنَّمَا سَأَلْتَ مِنْ حُكْمِ التَّيْرُ الْخُفَّاشِ بِإِنَّهُ تَيْرُ الَّذِي خَلَقَهُ إِيسَى and about the question about the question that you asked about the bird called bat it was this is the bird that was created by Jesus Christ with the permission of God and that is why it is not coming out during the day because it is afraid of other birds that's what Bob says you want to get complicated? you want to understand the writing of the Bob? I won't be able The writing of Baha'u'llah is like that TV. 
And there's a small little things how to operate and start a TV. Turn it on, turn it off, go back, do this. Simple. That's behind it. You watch another writing of the ball. Now you want to go behind the TV. Take the panel off. Try to understand what these wires are coming from. What is what? How many people can do that? That is what the revelation of Bob is. It is not revealed for people. It's a medicine, <laughs> like all the medicines of God. It has done its job. But why Bob says these things, and what is the effect of these things, it is absolutely the mind of mankind today and after this is have no capacity to understand it. But all I can tell you that is like one of those strange names that when you read when the prescription of doctor comes, I've said this to you, when I was, my back was broken and I was on cefazolin, I wouldn't know even how to say the word, but it's the medicine, it's an antibiotic that works. The writing of the bulb, as it is, as it was, whatever it is, it did its job. This is why today, Baha'i Fit is around. This is the foundation. This is the tree underground. You wouldn't know how the root works and what the shapes are what the formula is is very very difficult certainly for mr nader saidi who has spent all his life to know what emmanuel kant and diderot and montesquieu and mr baker bacon and all those guys have said okay spinoza That's one of the reasons that it is difficult to understand the writing of the Bible. He has this perplexity in his way of talking. When Bob says 40, 40 doesn't mean you're uh, 40 that you know. 2 plus 2 is 4. 1 plus 1 is 2 in the Euclidean world. One dollar coin, another dollar coin, you put it together, it's exactly two. One and one doesn't become two in nature. You can't say this is one apple and this is another apple and now do I have twice an apple. Twice of which apple you have? One apple is smaller than other apple. This apple is different from other apple. Now, the two apples together, you say two, but it's not really two. Two of which apple? By having one apple and another apple in hand, you have not doubled up exactly mathematically. It's over or under two. <laughs> it's not exactly doubled up, isn't it? In the nature, mathematics works differently. In the nature of God. There are no two things that are exactly the same. Therefore, you say that I have put them together. Therefore, I have twice as the value. No. So, did Jesus Christ create a bat? This word means something we don't know? No. Exactly, it means as what he says, Bob. It's not very strange. In Islam, I brought that before. The guy says, I came all the way to see uh, the fifth Imam of Islam. I saw he says something to people. And I was kind of perplexed. The other guy comes, he told him something else. I said to myself, what's going on? The next person comes, he tells him again another things. Well, I said, Imam, you said three different things for the same questions. It says, 
Don't you trust them? These guys, they'll die for you. You know it. You know it. Then why are you not trusting them to tell them the truth? A mom says to him that, I don't want to be, I don't want you two guys to get united in your opinions, in your ideas. Or else, the enemies might get interested. This is a lot of people talking the same way. There's no difference between them. There's a unity between them. And that unity, he says, is dangerous. They will come and kill me. And, I, and we do not want you to be united like that. <laughs> what is that? What does this mean, really? Because to Emma, the whole topic of the knowledge is bullshit. You die, you laugh at all of this. But there's one fact. I'm the fifth Imam, the sixth one has to come, the eleventh has to come, from them the Bob has to come. The plan of God is big. It doesn't matter if you guys are all misguided right now. You don't need to know the truth. This is a tradition in Islam. So, as we can see, it just continues in the writing of the Bob. Why? Because people are so sick spiritually. Their belief system is so wrong. So wrong. That it's a germ that has to be killed with another germ. What is a police? Police exactly does what a criminal do. A criminal does it for his own benefit. A police does it for the benefit of people. But he, just as the criminal kills, the police also is capable of killing. I call them antibiotics. Antibiotics is a germ. It doesn't attack your body, but it attacks the other germs. This writing of the bomb is like antibiotic. These are the germs that will kill the other germs. In their perplexity, of trying to understand what the writing of Bob is, they would have to defer to Baha'u'llah. And it has worked very well. Nader doesn't know this. Is there anything else that I have to go? This is another reason, perplexing the writing, because Bob, another thing that he does, why we cannot understand his writing, he uh, has not left things completed. He has many, many incomplete writings. And he says, if it's supposed to be 19 chapters, the chapter's got 19, you know, section, but it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't. Halfway in the middle, he leaves it. He does not want to have a demagogue. He doesn't want his revelation to be used as a demagogue against himself because Baha'u'llah is the Bob coming back and he knows it and he knows the previous uh, curriculum might go against him so he purposely revealed it mutilated self-destruct mechanism in it something by the way that as Mr. Nader Saidi has evolved in understanding this book I have to give it to him at the end of the book he does mention that all oh, the writing of the Bob and his rules, and it was all a strategy. Yes, it was a strategy of survival of the fate of God among the people. All right, this was only about the introduction of this book, but I'm going to have to get to the rest of it because I do not want this book to become an, a standard for the English-speaking people to take it as one of the masterpieces written on the Bob's writing, or one of the book of reference, or, or Mr. Saidi, or any other Baha'i, is actually capable of understanding and knowing it. Nobody is the authority to understand the writing of the Bob, except Baha'u'llah, 
except Abdul Baha, except Shauri Effendi. Even my own words about it is questionable. And what is left in the Baha'i faith is what is the understanding of the writing of the Bab. The writing of the Bab is the sketch that a painter draws first and then he makes changes to it. It's all a sketchy. The entire revelation of the Bab is a preliminary sketches of things of something that is going to be drawn and a portrait. First of few lines. That's what it is. Eh? Uh, this is what Nader said. He fails to understand and others about it. But I probably have going to bug you guys for another 10 hours to speak about this book. God be with you.